Today we're going to show you how to replace a power supply. First we'll remove the five or six screws which hold on the back cover. We're using a 7 32 inch nut driver to do that. We'll set the screws aside and remove the back cover. Here we see the power supply. The symptoms that we have are that the LCDs are dark and scrambled and displaying gibberish type information. We have previously measured the voltage across the output capacitor and determined that it is not 5 volts. So we're going to go ahead and swap out the power supply. We will remove the 7 screws which hold this top board in place. Again, we're using our 7 32nd inch nut driver. Your panel will have an odometer installed, so you'll also need to remove this connector. Just pull upward on it and set it aside. Next, we will lift up on the top logic board. Things that are holding it at this point are going to be this index pin, this index pin, and this 12-pin electrical connector. So I just put my fingers underneath the board and lift. Sometimes this takes quite a bit more pressure. In this case, we have a board whose, uh, whose spring tension is worn out, so this one came right off. And again, we will lift here, and the board should come free. Recording. Okay, to remove the, the power supply, we're also going to use some needle nose pliers, and we'll use a pair of scissors a little bit later on. We're going to put the needle nose pliers underneath this plastic tab and lift gently. So next we'll put the pliers under the bottom edge of the board and again just lift gently. Finally we need to remove the third clip which is underneath this transistor. Let's put the pliers in at an angle and again just lift gently. And the power supply should lift away from the board. Now we're still attached by this 8-pin ribbon cable. So next, we will remove the power supply. We're just going to take some scissors and cut that ribbon cable and set the old power supply aside. Next, I'll use an X-Acto knife to cut the ribbon cable into eight individual wires so that we can remove one at a time. Be careful not to cut the traces on the board when you're doing this. You definitely don't want to cut down. Be careful not to cut the transformer behind here while you're cutting up. Okay, and now we have eight individual wires that can be removed. The connections on the back side of the board are covered in conformal coating, which is kind of an epoxy coating that uh, covers the solder joints. So in order to remove these connections, we're going to have to add a little additional solder. We included enough with a new power supply that you'll be able to do this. So we'll add a little bit of solder, and then we'll lift the wire away. And we'll do the same thing for the next seven. Just add a little bit of solder, grab the wire, and lift it away. 
Some of these get a little bit hot, so you might want to use your needle nose pliers to grab a hold of the wire. A couple of ways to get rid of the solder that's uh, remaining on these traces. The first is using solder braid, desoldering braid. Uh, it's a solder removal tool that you can get at Radio Shack. The way we use that is we place the solder braid on top of the solder that we want to remove. We heat the back side and we wait. And the, the heat will draw the solder up into the solder braid and the connection will be clean. Another method is to use a solder removal tool. This uses a vacuum in order to remove the solder. And again, we just heat that solder up. We depress the button on the tool and the solder is pulled up inside the tool. This method is a little bit faster and it's reusable. Okay, we've removed the solder from each of the holes. And again, I'm just going to take the solder braid since I have both methods available. I'm going to take the solder braid and I'm going to clean up the board a little bit. All I'm really doing is scrubbing the uh, traces with the solder braid and that cleans things up nicely. We'll use the same cleaning method on the other side. We'll heat the solder braid. We'll press lightly and scrub those connections clean. Today we're placing the power supply with a Royal Premium Power Supply. This is a new power supply that we've started carrying. We're super excited about this. It features a microcontroller which continuously measures the output voltage of the power supply and gives us visual indicators when everything's okay. This will be a green light or when there's a problem this will be a red light. If a problem develops the power supply will shut itself down to protect itself and to protect the logic board. This power supply is manufactured with surface mount components to minimize problems due to vibrations. This power supply is manufactured with top tier component Texas Instruments ICs, Panasonic and Kemet capacitors for absolute reliability. Best of all, it was designed and manufactured in the USA just like your Corvette. The Royal Premium Power Supply is designed as an exact replacement for your factory power supply. It has a new set of plastic clips which align exactly with the holes in your cluster motherboard and it comes with a replacement ribbon cable which is pre-soldered to the power supply. To install the new power supply we'll snap these two connectors into place then we'll take the factory ribbon cable the red wire goes to pin 1 we'll align the cable so that one wire goes through each of the eight holes then we'll turn it over okay and again we're verifying that we have one wire in each of these eight holes we'll take our soldering iron and, and the supplied solder and we'll solder this cable into place to make a good solder connection we're going to heat both the wire poking through the hole and the pad at the same time then we'll apply a small amount of solder and remove the heat source. Next we're going to solder the other end of the cable just to kind of hold all of those wires in place. Again remove the heat source. And now we can solder each of the remaining connections and that looks very good. Next we'll snap the power supply into place and we'll bend the ribbon cable so that it clears the housing. To reassemble the cluster, we will align the 12 pins of the electrical connector and the two alignment pins. Press the connector back into place. Then we'll reinstall the seven screws which hold the logic board in place. Next, we will replace the rear housing and reinstall the five or six screws that hold this in place.